Hello good people and welcome back. Now Grandmaster Wesley So may not be the world champion, but that doesn't mean he can't play like one. In this game, he channels his inner Karpov, his inner Kramnik, and safe to say his inner Magnus Carlsen. With a very technical approach to the game. As you'll see, he's less of a fire-breathing tactician and more a wise sage kind of wizard with the technical mastery he displays here. It's a Wesley So game, ladies and gents. Let's check it. Welcome to Amazing Chess Games, a level up study. So this game took place during the Tata Steel Master Tournament in 2017 in Harlem, Netherlands. Wesley So plays as white and Radoslav Wojtaszczyk plays as black. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Oh. Before I begin, and before I forget, if you haven't hit the like and subscribe button, that'd be truly appreciated. You have my gratitude. Let us begin. White plays c4, the English opening. Knight to f6 by black. Knight to f3 by white. Capturing the dark squares in the center. Now e6. Liberating the bishop also for a d5 later. Here g3, fianchetto. d5 directly challenging the center and the c4 pawn d4 by white bishop to e7 developing moves developing moves that's all we got bishop to g2 castle king by black and now queen to c2 developing the queen if takes takes it becomes very catalanish and the pawn in question or rather the pawn that's being targeted is c7 c5 was played um, maximum tension in the middle now all four pawns uh, attacking each other and idea is to maintain the tension castle king by white knight to c6 developing the knight there and here d takes on c5 the first to capture in the game is wesley black plays d4 idea is um it's going to be hard to develop the pawn here on a c5 and uh, white or rather black wants to maintain the center pawn which is now d4 and and protected twice here wesley plays a3 idea of pushing on uh, b3 to protect that pawn or if captures here then simply attacking the, uh, the bishop there and preparing to fianchetto the dark square bishop the opponent prevents that with a5 rook to d1 hitting the pawn and now uh, asking a black well are you can defend that pawn later because black has invested in the center and uh, wesley has invested or rather hasn't shown us his plans yet e5 now protecting and uh liberating the light squares for the light square bishop knight to c3 first exclaim idea is you can't capture because your queen drops knight to c3 allows for the development of the knight but also allowing that knight to take influence and influence the center i mean here bishop to c5 finally capturing the middle here knight to d5 was played a very tricky move by wesley but let's look at the other ideas. In this position, you could also play knight to a4. Um, and, and that's pretty natural because you are hitting the bishop. And then after bishop retreats, c5. Pushing the pawn, reducing the influence of the bishop. But it does look kind of silly because you have a knight there <laughs> on the rim. And now e4, just to for black to push and bully the center at which point uh, knight to g5 attacks the pawn yet again bishop to f5 defends the pawn and now takes after takes this becomes a super complicated position after say the the rook takes on e2 uh, again these are grandmasters but wesley has a plan of his own and it's a fantastic plan so to speak so knight to d5 was played and uh, at first at first glance if you don't calculate it looks like after uh, knight takes 
takes, queen takes on d5, you're down a, a pawn. In this exchange, of course, but that knight there is full of poison. And when I say poison, it's it's not an understatement. Because after c takes d, you have to capture, because this is on pre's, this is on pre's. But if queen takes, you now have to look at this. And you hit the queen there. Uh, at which point you have to defend with e4. But now, knight takes on e4, idea of a discovery. If you leave your queen there, the next move is knight to f6, and you lose your queen. But at the same time, this is attacked. So ideas like queen to h5 doesn't work because you just capture that. And of course, say a d3, just to be active in counterattack, you just take with a rook. And after takes, doesn't matter. If bishop takes, queen is lost again. After takes, goodbye d5 queen. And if queen takes, the same thing you just captured. It's very, very clever by Wesley to foil the opponent's uh, ideas. Because after knight to d5, well, there is now a raging knight there in the middle that you can't get rid of. It's influencing a lot of squares, mind you. After that move, h6 was played. Um, because as as far as uh, we, we, we talked about after captures and captures, this was the key player in that position. So here, bishop to d2 was played. Uh, Wesley has an idea, and lots of ideas, on the queen side. a4, trying to foil that idea, but now bishop to b4. After takes, a while ago, Wesley wanted to push the pawn there on b4, but now he has a double pawn structure. Looks not so pretty, but it still reinforces the idea that he wants to attack on the sidelines. After knight takes, b takes on c5, knight to b4. Queen hits the knight there, knight to c6, but now b4. The idea is you can't take en passant because a goodbye is a rook. Queen to e7 was played, but now queen to b2 first, defending the pawn, of course. Bishop to g4, rook to e1, rook f to d8, and now remaneuvering the knight there uh, to protect this pawn. Bishop to e6 was played, and now push on b5, knight to b8. Queen to b4. In this structure, I just drew an L. This pawn is the weaker, weaker link of this uh, trifecta, this right-angled pawn structure. And now f5. Uh, Black wants to maximize the pawn phalanx that a while ago he negotiated that he wanted by pushing the pawn here on d5. And now knight to b3. A clever move again. Uh, if you guys remember the first time Wesley played knight to c3, it was a pin on the queen, but now another pin. Of course, you can't take because you drop your rook. That would be terrible at the grandmaster level or any game, objectively. But then knight to d7, unpinning the rook. Now, takes here. Still, you can't take because you'll be down to exchange. So rook moved to b8. But now the rook can take the pawn on a4, and so it did. Rook takes now pushes on c6. Just clever maneuvering. After the exchange takes, these two are still on fork. Takes there. And now it looks like, is black going to equalize? Well, let's see. After takes, takes rook to c1. And at long last, um, Wesley's idea has been realized because this has been advanced far enough, and after takes here, which would be a blunder and did not happen in the game, rook to c8 will be played, and after takes, this pawn falls, and white is up to exchange, easily winning this game. Of course, that wasn't what was played. Bishop to e6, retreat, and now rook to c8. It looks like after takes takes, the game is neutralized and black has a center, but let's have a look at what happened in the game. Rook takes on c8, queen to c8, but after takes, the simple pawn push, 
b6. A la Karpov, maybe a la Carlsen. And here the opponent resigned because a knight will take over here on b6 and push and push. So let's say king moved to uh, f7, knight to c5. The king is too far away from this square. And hence, simply push. And after takes, game is over. The game is done. These pawns will be stopped and you have a raging knight because you're up a whole darn night. Hope you guys enjoyed that. It was very technical, very uh, Kramnik, Karpov, and Carlson-like by Wesley So. Anyways, I'll see you guys later. More content to come from this channel.